welcome i welcome you all to this lecture in the course samasa in paninian grammar 2 as is our practice we begin our lecture with the recitation of the mangala charana विश्वेश सच्चिदानंद वंदेहम योखिल जगत चरीकर्ति बरी भर्ति संजरी हर्ति लीलया विश्वेश सच्चिदानंद वंदेहम योखिल जगत चरीकर्ति बरी भर्ति संजरी हर्ति लीलया in this lecture we shall be revisiting the theory of compound formation this is extremely important to know how avyayi bhav bahuvrihi and dvandva samasas get formed this particular theory is called samartha theory and it is based on the karaka theory stated in the paninian grammar both these theories are part of paninian grammar and this is as simple as that the theory of compound formation is called samartha theory and it is based on the karaka theory this is the simple explanation or simple description of the theory of compound formation in paninian grammar <clears throat> what it can be also described as a combination of both karaka theory as first input in combination with the samartha theory to produce an output for the karaka theory so the karaka theory in combination with the samartha theory will generate an output which will be part of the sentence which will come under the karaka theory once again so karaka theory is the input in combination with the samartha theory the compound is generated as an output and then this samasa becomes the input for the karaka theory once again this is how the process of compounding can be described in paninian grammar what this means is that the input for the process of compounding is a sentence vakya in sanskrit and a vakya is made up of padas and padas are made up of prakriti and pratyaya so a sentence whose parts are padas they are the input for the process of compounding this can be also described as the sentential context so the sentential context in the form of others becomes the input for this particular process and 
the output of the process of compounding is a pratipadika. I repeat, the output of the process of compounding is a pratipadika. And pratipadika is a nominal root word. And then this pratipadika becomes an input for a sentence through the Karaka theory. This is what we meant when we said that Karaka theory is the input in combination with the Samartha theory, compound is generated and then it becomes an input for the Karaka theory. So, we repeat that the input for the process of compounding is a sentence and the output of the process of compounding is a pratipadika. Pratipadika is a nominal root word and this nominal root word becomes an input of a sentence. Then that sentence further can also become an input for the next level of compounding and the output of this process would be again a pratipadika and this process can continue recursively. This is unending at least theoretically that one sentence becomes an input for the compound and the output generated is a pratipadika and this pratipadika once again becomes an input for the Karaka theory and also the sentence and that sentence can once again become an input of the process of compounding. Let us take an example. Here are the meanings stated on this particular slide. The first two bullets put together are Ram, Ram and Lakshman go. And here Ram and Lakshman are independent meanings. The second bullet says Ram Lakshman go. This is the compound, compound meaning. Then Ram Lakshman, which is a compound meaning, is appended with another meaning Bharat. And we have Ram Lakshman and Bharat go. So Ram and Lakshman in the first bullet are part of the sentence of Ram and Lakshman go. So these two words, these two meanings in the sentence meaning, they become input for the Ram Lakshman which is the Samasa meaning. Now this Samasa meaning is compounded with the other meaning which is part of the sentence. And so we have Ram Lakshman and Bharat go and then there would be compound meaning once again and we will have Ram Lakshman Bharat go. Now we have Ram Lakshman Bharat as one unit and Shatrugna go and then we can form the compound meaning Ram Lakshman Bharat Shatrugna go. This can continue up to the level the speaker wants. Now these meanings, they 
are con conveyed through the words and then the words will also undergo similar formations. So we have Ramaha Lakshmanascha Gachataha. And here we have a sentence with four words and Ramaha and Lakshmana, Lakshmanaha and Cha which is part of a sentence becomes an input for the process of compounding and Rama Lakshmana is a compound form generated and this Pratipadika Rama Lakshmana then becomes an input for the sentence and so we have Rama Lakshmanau Gachataha as the sentence. Now Rama Lakshmanau Bharatascha Gachanti. This is the next set of sentences which conveys the next set of sentence meaning. So now Rama Lakshmanau, which is a compound word is joined by another word Bharata. Now these again can be compounded and we can have Rama Lakshmana Bharataha as one word, as a compound word and then we'll have Rama Lakshmana Bharataha Gachanti. So Rama Lakshmana Bharatascha Gachanti, this is a sentence so the sentential context becomes an input. Rama Lakshmanau and Bharataha, they become input for the derivation of the compound. And Rama Lakshmana Bharata is the compound form generated, which then becomes an input for the sentence. And then we have Rama Lakshmana Bharataha Gachanti as the output sentence. <clears throat> then this Samasa Rama Lakshmana Bharataha this becomes part of the sentence and then Shatrughnascha can be joined with it and then we have Rama Lakshmana Bharataha Shatrughnascha Gachanti this third set of sentences expresses the third set of meaning demonstrated on the previous slide. So now Rama Lakshmana Bharataha, Shatrughnaha, these get compounded and we have Rama Lakshmana Bharata Shatrughnaha Gachanti. So Rama Lakshmana Bharataha Shatrughnaha Cha, these are part of the sentence. So this sentence becomes the input. And Rama Lakshmana Bharata Shatrughna, this becomes the Samasa output, which is a Pratipadika. And then this becomes part of the sentence. And so we have Rama Lakshmana Bharata Shatrughnaha Gachanti. So Rama Lakshmana Bharata Shatrughnaha, which is an example of a Dvandva Samasa, can be now said to have another Dvandva Samasa, Rama Lakshmana Bharataha, in its Garbha. Rama Lakshmana Bharataha, in its turn, is an example of a Dvandva Samasa, which has Rama Lakshmana in its Garbha. And Rama Lakshmana is an example of a Dvandva Samasa, 
which has got Ramaha and Lakshmanaha as its constituents. So Rama, Lakshmana, Bharata, Shatrughnaha can be described as the Prathama Bhuvachana of the Pratipadika Rama, Lakshmana, Bharata, Shatrughna which matches with Gachanti and this compound Rama, Lakshmana, Bharata, Shatrughna is a Dvandva which is a Dvandva Garbha Dvandva now this Dvandva is also Dvandva Garbha in all Rama, Lakshmana, Bharata, Shatrughna is a Dvandva Samasa which can be described as Dvandva Garbha, Dvandva Garbha, Dvandva. <clears throat> it can be shown in the form of the following equation. Input is a sentence which has got four words W1, 2, 3 and 4. Now each W is made up of root and termination. R stands for root and T stands for termination. R1 plus T1, R2 plus T2, R3 plus T3 and R4 plus T4. Now W1, W2 and W3 can be compounded together and in fact was compounded together to produce an output in the form of Wx. Now this Wx will have Rx plus Tx as its internal structure and this Wx can further be compounded with W4 and W4 will have R4 plus T4. Now Wx is Rx plus Tx. Now this can be further shown as R1 plus R2 plus Tx. In this manner the internal structure of the samasas can be shown. Now this is an explanation of the equation. So if the input is sentence which is made up of W1, 2, 3 and 4 and each W is made up of R and T and then W1, 2 and 3 they get compounded and the compound output is Wx and then it is compounded with W4. Here is an explanation. So we have Ramaha Lakshmanascha Gachataha as the input sentence where Rama, Ramaha is W1, Lakshmanaha is W2, Ch is W3 and then of course Gachataha is another word. Then Ramaha can be rewritten technically as Rama plus Su. Rama is R1 and Su is T1. Lakshmanaha can be rewritten as Lakshmana plus Su where Lakshmana is R2 and Su is T2. Ch can be rewritten as Ch plus Su where Ch is R3 and Su is T3 and Gachataha can be rewritten as Gama plus Tas where Gama is R4 and Tas is T4. <coughs> now W1, 2 and 3 they get compounded and we get the output in the form of a sentence where there is Wx with W4. So Rama Lakshmana is that Wx in which Rama Lakshmana is 
the Pratipadika and Au is the Pratyaya. So Rx is Rama Lakshmana and Tx is Au. And R4 plus T4 is the same, Gamma plus Tas. Now, this Rx can be shown to have R1 and R2, Rama and Lakshmana. And then further internal structure of Ramaha and Lakshmanaha can also be shown within this particular structure. Su in Rama plus Su and Su in Lakshmana plus Su are the heads of the respective units. To them are linked the meanings of Rama and Lakshmana. These two, Su and Su, are linked to each other by the speaker and thereby are linked to meanings of two independent words or Padarthas and thereby are linked to Padas. The interlinked meanings are the input and similarly the interlinked words also are the input and these meanings are merged together and one meaning output is generated also known as samasartha and also the words are merged together and one word output is generated which is also known as samasa so samasartha and samasa, they correspond with each other. This output merged one unit of meaning becomes part of the sentence meaning. Similarly, this output merged one unit of word becomes part of the sentence. And this output is a nominal root, also known as a Pratipadika. Now, to this Pratipadika is added a termination called Sup, which makes it, namely the Pratipadika, eligible to be used in a sentence in the form of a Pad. This is how we can explain this particular equation and also the internal structure of the Samasa. The example taken here is that of Advandva Samasa and similarly examples of Bahuvrihi and Avyayi Bhava can also be shown to be explained in a similar manner. These are the texts referred to. Thank you very much.